Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. You're getting a lucky one two in one month, yay! Um, this is a dish I did um, when I started fusing. Um, I did this era dish on a course at the Fantastic Glass Hub. If you ever get a chance to do a course at Glass Hub, do it. They are great. They really are fantastic, the ladies there. Um, and we were messing around with irids and I came up with this design and I love it and I just think it's a really nice way to use irids in a slightly different way that you might not have thought of and I thought I'd share it with you. Um, as you can see we've cut the irids um, and then in strips and alternated the patterns. Now I've also grouted between which means if you have a break in the irid, in the, in the irids when you're cutting the strips, if like me sometimes you're not the best at cutting them, you can actually still use them and you just use a little bit of grout to stick them together and it kind of just adds to the whole idea of the project. Um, and then you glue them all down and it's full fused onto fibre paper in the kiln carving. So then you get this kiln carved irid effect. And as you know from the bullseye videos, if you do it irid side down, you get this lovely kind of matte irid finish, which is beautiful. So here we go and I'm going to show you how to make this. So the first thing I've chosen is the size of mould I'm going to use. This has been dictated by the size of glass I get. Uh, when I buy earrings, I don't tend to need a lot, so I'm buying the kind of um, sheets like this big. Uh, in England, they're like 24s by 24s. Um, so for you and your American money, that's like the, I don't know whether you get them in this size, sort of nine, nine and a half inches about square. So I don't want to choose a mould that's long because I've only got a piece of glass this big. Um, I've chosen, I quite like something with a bit of um, red or orange in it. That's just my pre um, preference for this. I've chosen this one, which I think, it's actually not got a label on it, so I'm pretty sure it might be even a cranberry. Um, so it's a pretty expensive piece of glass, but I love this project and I think it's worth doing it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is cut the strips. Now I hear a lot of you groan, cutting strips, hate the idea. The good thing about this is even if they don't break right, you can still use them because of the grouting we're going to do. Um, I'm going to try and scrap, cut my scripts, um, strips now and if we're lucky some of them won't break right so I can show you that grouting I was talking about afterwards. I have a lot of different strip cutting systems I, I use. I've got Rudy Gritch's one, um, I've got, I don't know, so many I can't even remember them all. Quite frankly half the time because it's easier and I can't be bothered to get them out, I literally use one of these green cutting mats and a cutting um, square. Now I'm not really worried about all the lines being um, the same widths. It's not really about that for this design so that's another thing you don't need to worry about. All I'm wanting is just to get some nice lines across and I'm going to go across the whole sheet with lines. So just a quick note, when you're cutting doing the lines you don't want to do them that way across the pattern. You want to make sure that your irid pattern is running the opposite direction from your lines. You want color the, all the different irid colors, rainbow, in each line so that you're getting um, lots of different colors. So when you turn them round, you're gonna get the different colors there. If you did all of them this way, then you'd have one that was silver and then one that was this color and it wouldn't work. So just make sure that you're doing your lines across the right way. So here you can see uh, I've scored all of it now I'm going to start um, breaking it. As with all um, times you want to sort of break, you don't want to start at one, there you go, that's one that's gone wrong. Um, you want to uh, not try and break line, 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 you want to sort of make sure there's lots of, um, you're sort of breaking it into halves. Sorry, I'm not explaining that very well. Um, so then here I'm breaking it into half and then half and then half. But I've got a one that didn't quite work very well. So at least I can show you what I mean about it doesn't matter if it doesn't work very well. I'm just going to use the rosing pliers to just nick that little bit off. Make sure smiley face down. Get it there. Um, there it is off. So I'm not sure whether you use a generic glass cleaner or a glass cleaner that you dilute. I use one that I dilute and I was using 
um, kind of, uh, you know, there's bottles that you can buy for ironing and when you spray on. And I never found them particularly good. And recently I started just reusing old, you know, bo uh, bottles, giving them a really good proper wash. And they're kind of made sturdier. And these are much better, the sort of squeezy bits. And they work much better. So I'm, that's what I'm using. You must clean your glass, guys, before you um, do it. So I'm just giving each one of these a bit of a rub off. We use um, these cloths and I clean them just because... Uh, I don't like to have a load of paper waste, they don't recycle in Croatia, so it's, uh, it's a bit hard or not very well, they, they're recycling. So I know these put microfibres into the, into the world, but I feel at least it's not adding a load of paper to the world. Um, so those are cleaned, now I'm using, for this one I'm just using Alma's glue, it just dries quicker and a bit harder than the bullseye glue. Um, uh, I've cleaned this piece already. And I'm just going to literally put some glue across, just making sure there's a good covering to hold these pieces down. You want them to hold down really well because you're going to need to file them that way up so the glue needs to hold it so you can flip it over. And then I'm going to start putting these on. So the first one is going this way around and then the next one is going to go the opposite way. I don't mind if there's a little gap between them because that's going to be grouted. So now you can see they're all um, alternate directions. The one that's broken is here. I put it in. So when this is all hard in the glue, then we can just put what powder in to grout it and we'd grout that hole here. So that will all be grouted. I'm using, a, I use, like using a kind of contrasting powder with these. So I'm going to use black um to get a kind of sort of um quite a, uh, a, a striking contrast i'm making sure there's enough of a gap between each piece to let the powder in you want to make you know if you don't have a gap and big enough you're not going to be able to get powder in they don't all need to be the same though some can be more some can be less um and then once the glue has dried we can come back and grout it so I now want to design the pattern for the fibre paper that's going to go underneath that's fired. So the whole piece is fired as one, which is great. You're firing this and on a full fuse onto the fibre paper, which is kiln carving it at the same time. Um, now you can draw out the pattern you want. You can do anything. For me, I'm looking for organic, kind of simple, wavy shapes. So I'm literally just going to go straight in. It's good to kind of pull them apart a bit so you can see. I quite like sort of doing little bits of cutouts. And you can imagine we need just over 20 centimetres worth. It's a bit longer because it's easier to sort of place it on um, when it's a bit longer. If you don't feel up to sort of doing it freehand, you can draw it out first and then give it a go afterwards. It's quite of a, you can use a sharpie on this. Just watch out, this stuff can be a bit itchy. So it's good to wash your hands after you've used it. So this is completed and um, ready to go in the kiln. This is now dry and ready to be grouted. I've managed to get a new mask, woohoo! And I think you can hear me through this one. So I'm gonna wear it, because it's much safer for me. Um, I have one of these great uh, tweezery scoops, love it, from Warm Glass. I don't know where you get them in America. And I'm literally just gonna put this on. I'm kind of using my finger. Just push the powder into the cracks. And I'm gonna keep going all over it until there's powder in every single crack. So quite often I need to maybe fill up extra bits. It's best to do it with my finger. If you use a paintbrush, you're going to pull the, um, the bristles will pull the kind of lines out and pull the frit out. So I'm just literally using my finger and like pinches of it in the end just to sort of fill up areas that I might have missed. It's quite hard to get it in at the edges. You don't need to worry too much. It doesn't need to be perfect. Then after that, I'm just going to fill up a dripper or a dropper or whatever you call them. 
I'm thinking I'm dripping with water and just put bits of water in which is just going to help hold the powder in place for when I'm turning it over. So you don't want to use too much water otherwise you're going to loosen the glass, the glued glass down. And now I'm just going to use a cotton bud just to tidy up the areas where there may be some black glass powder remaining. So then there's just the irid there. But the lines are running the opposite direction from the lines on here. Um, now the water has loosened up one of my strips so I'm going to have to be quite careful turning it over and if anything starts to fall out I'll try and catch it. So it's going to go down and then I'm putting it onto the mould like that. I can adjust these a tiny bit once I've got it down. Move that one in a bit. Move that one in a bit. And there it's pretty much ready to go. So I took it out of the kiln. When I did, I made sure I was wearing my mask. You're dealing with fired fibre paper. So clean up with a mask on, hoover it, get all the fibre paper off before you take your mask off. So now it's all cleaned up. I love it. it you, as you sort of tilt it in the light, it gets this amazing optical effect. It's not fully kiln carved. It hasn't gone high enough to really kind of be cut with the kiln carving, but it's a slow roll. There is a bit of cracking in the irid around here, but I don't mind that. I think it's really pretty overall and it looks amazing, the kind of irid with the bumps. So this is the mould I'm going to put it on. It's already prepared. I'll just put it in the kiln like this. I will then put a spirit level on to make sure it's flat before I take it um, up to temperature to slump. So here it is, all nicely slumped. I'm really pleased how it came out. Um, this is a great one, I think, you know, coming leading up to the Christmas season, if you want a few little trinket dishes or pl platters that people may kind of want to buy for Christmas presents, um, I think this is a really good seller. So I hope you enjoyed uh, making it. And if you enjoyed this YouTube video, please subscribe.